If you suffer from heartburn, indigestion, stomach distress due to excess acidity, try Bisodol. By neutralizing excess acids, Bisodol soothes irritated membranes, does a thoroughgoing job of bringing amazingly fast relief. Take as directed. Get minty-flavored Bisodol, B-I-S-O-D-O-L, tonight. Only 25 cents at all druggists. The following program will be interrupted to bring you any late news developments. <laughs> Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is on the air. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel's Toothpaste presents Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction and one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday night at the same time, the famous old investigator will take from his file and bring to us one of his most celebrated missing person cases. Has your dentist ever warned you not to use anything harsh or gritty when cleaning your teeth? If so, you'll be glad to know that Colonel's toothpaste contains no grit, no pumice, nothing that could possibly scratch precious tooth enamel. While Colonel's helps clean and polish teeth with unsurpassed effectiveness, it does so with complete safety. And remember this, Colonel's tastes as bright as it cleans. You'll love the fresh, clean, cool feeling that Colonos gives your whole mouth. It's a grand waker-upper of morning. A grand picker-upper if you smoke too much. Tomorrow, join the thousands who start their day the Colonos way. You can get Colonos at any drugstore tonight. K-O-L-Y-N-O-S. Colonos Toothpaste. <laughs> Now for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, and the case of the woman in blue. Today in Mr. Keene's office, an obviously nervous and unhappy young Air Force lieutenant awaits the Tracer's return, while Susie, Mr. Keene's attractive young office assistant, does her best to make him feel a little more comfortable and at ease. Are you sure Mr. Keene will be in soon, Miss? I'm positive, Lieutenant. You see, I, I haven't got much time, and this is important. I understand. Mr. Keene phoned half an hour ago and said he was on his way to the office. Uh, won't you sit down and make yourself comfortable? Oh, I'm, I'm too nervous, thanks, anyway. I beg your pardon? Oh, I, I, I was just talking to... Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I, I upset the edge. Oh, that's quite all right. I'll get it. Here, let me... Oh, I'm sorry. I hit your head like a clumsy idiot. Well, if you don't relax, Lieutenant, we'll both be nervous, Rex. Oh, here's Mr. Keene now. Good morning, Susie. Good morning, Mr. Keene. Your mail's inside. Thank you. This is Lieutenant Lanson, Mr. Keene. Oh, how do you do? I'm very glad to know you, sir. Could I see you for just a few moments, Mr. Keene? I have a favor to ask of you. And Come I'd into like... my office, Lieutenant. Oh, thank you, Mr. Keene. Careful, Lieutenant. Hmm? You don't want to knock the typewriter over. Oh, I... I think I've done enough damage already, thanks. This way, Lieutenant. Ah, please sit down. Well, thanks, but I'd just as soon stand. All oh, right. Suit yourself. Now, what's the trouble? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that the reason I'm in such a hurry is because I'm going back overseas again in two weeks when my leave expires. I'm in the Air Force. Yes, I noticed your wings. I also noticed you're wearing a distinguished flying cross ribbon and three oak leaf clusters. Yes, sir. I got them all in the South Pacific. Well, good for you. Well, I hope to be sent to England this trip. And if I could only see French again before I leave... Francia? Would... Yes, sir. Mr. Keene, I don't think you're the answer to the Lovelorn column, sir. And I know you're not dealing in service for the lonely heart. Not exactly. But, well, time is short. You see, I fell in love with a girl at a masquerade party three nights ago. Mm -hmm. And, well, she fell in love with me. She gave me her address, and when I went there the next day, the maid let me in... Well, in a most mysterious manner. And then also with great mystery, she announced that Miss Fancia Jones had gone away two days before and would be gone indefinitely. I see. She said there was no way to reach her, and 
Well, I could feel myself being pushed out of the house. I'm sure, sir, that something rotten is going on there. Something has happened to Fran. You mean you believe there's been foul play, Lieutenant? Well, if Franchi had left town two days before, how did I come to meet her at a party just the night before? Mm, it's obvious the maid wasn't telling the truth. But it may have been for different reasons than you suspect. Would a girl leave a guy flat without a word of explanation after telling him... Well, after telling him... What? Well, the thing she told me. No. Let's relax, Lieutenant. This thing may not be as bad as you think it is. Well, then you'll help me, Mr. King? I'd like to know who wouldn't help a man in uniform. Just a moment. Yes, Mr. King? Susie, would you come in here with your book, please? Yes. I, uh, I want Susie to take down certain details concerning Miss Joe. Oh, I'll be glad to give them to her, sir. Yes, Mr. King? Susie, I'd like you to get the usual details from Lieutenant Lanson in regard to the missing person. Oh, yes, sir. Now, what is Miss Jones' address, Lieutenant? Are you going over there now, sir? Well, the first thing I want to do is to find out why the maid told you that story. Well, the address is number 18 Wickersham Road. It's in Westchester. And where can I get in touch with you? Oh, I'm staying at the Hotel Page, sir. All right. I'll call you there just as soon as I have some word. Oh, thanks very much, Mr. King. This means a great deal to me. I'm glad to help if I can. When Mike Clancy calls Susie, would you please ask him to meet me at that Westchester address? Yes, I will, Mr. King. And tell him to wait outside the house for me. Well, I'll see you soon with good news, I hope, Lieutenant. Well, thanks again, sir. Um, who is Mike Clancy? Oh, Mr. King's assistant. Oh, I, I thought you were his assistant, Miss... Oh, I'm one of his office assistants. And I wish you'd just call me Susie. There's no need to be formal. All right. My name is Don. Don. Now, the lady's name, please. Miss Francia Jones. And her age? Oh, I'd say she was about 24. Oh, that's my age. A color of hair? Mm, what? What color of hair does Miss Jones oh. have? Oh, I don't mean to sound like a police sergeant taking notes, but well, we need all those details. You of course, think, I, I understand. She has, well, honey-colored hair, I'd say. Honey-colored? Yes. Her hair is about your color. Oh, I see. Uh, eyes? Beautiful. What color? Oh, uh, green. Height? Just high enough to make a wonderful dancing partner. Oh, oh, about five, four. Weight? Oh, about... Well, let's see, I'd say... Well, 140 or so. 140? Why, she must be... Uh... Must be what? Nothing. Oh, oh, she, she's not fat. Oh, gosh, no. She, well, she's no heavier than you are. I weigh 112. Oh, well, then that's what Francie would. I've never met a man who had any conception of what a woman should weigh. Why, good heavens, if I weighed 140, I... Well, let's not go into that. Um, any other details that would make her easily identifiable? Scars or birthmarks? No. No scars. But what a smile. And when we met, she was wearing a dazzling light blue evening gown. She was, well, a vision in sort of starlight. Well, the smile won't help. And neither would the evening go. Well, is that all? Yes, thank you. Well, I guess I'd better go now. Well, we know where to get in touch with you, Lieutenant, if we need any further details. Yes. Thanks a lot. Oh, Lieutenant. Yes? Don't worry. Mr. Keen will find her for you, I'm sure. Oh, I hope so. Thanks for being so nice. So long. Goodbye. And good luck. Hmm. Honey-colored hair. Green eyes. Five feet, four inches tall, 112 pounds. <laughs> well, he could just as well have been describing me. Yes, sir? Is Miss Jones at home? Miss Jones? Why, yes, isn't it? I, I, I'm sorry. She, she's out of town. She... Who is it, Anna? Anna? Yes, ma'am. Who is it? A gentleman to see you, ma'am. Are you Miss Jones? I'm uh, Mrs. Jones. That'll be all, Anna. Yes, ma'am. There's no Miss Jones living here? Uh, no. May I ask who you are? My name is Keene. I'm a special investigator. At the moment, I'm working with Lieutenant Lanson. Oh, Don... Were you at home yesterday, Mrs. Jones, when Don... Yes, I was, Mr. King. Then may I ask why... Before you go any further, 
Let me tell you my side of the story. I wish you would, Mrs. Jones. I I feel so ashamed of what I did to Don. I, I know I owe you an explanation. You owe him the explanation, Mrs. Jones. But please go on. Well, I'm married, as you know now. Before my marriage, I was something of an actress. I might have had a career, perhaps, if I'd tried hard enough. At any rate, I married Everett three years ago. Everett Jones is your husband? Uh, yes. You've heard of him, Miss Keene? Wasn't he indicted for fraud some months ago? Well, he was indicted, but the charge was never proved. He was acquitted in both cases. There were two indictments? Yes, but, well, that's neither here nor there. I fell in love with Everett because he, well, I, I knew he could support me in the way in which I wanted to live. I know he's a wealthy man, Mrs. Jones, but what has all this to do with Don Lanson? Well, I'm, I'm coming to that. My husband pays a great deal of attention to his business, and I resent being neglected. Lately, I've gotten into the habit of going to the theater alone, often dining alone. Not very entertaining, I assure you. I imagine it isn't. <laughs> the other night, I decided to attend that masquerade ball. I had dinner at the Club Palermo, and then went to the dance. I met Don there, as you know. I knew he wanted fun and relaxation. And I didn't want to spoil the illusion by saying I was married. The whole affair was entirely innocent, Mr. King. Innocent? When you permit a young soldier to fall in love with you, a married woman? I, I didn't realize he'd go so far. Oh, I, I admit it was the worst sort of brainless reasoning. I had no idea he'd fall in love. It's surprising, too, for I'm ten years older than he is, though I don't look it when I meet up. When he showed up the following day, you decided to end the matter by pretending you were gone, is that it? Yes. I'm afraid my maid spoiled things. But I didn't want to hurt the boy. I just wanted to end the affair as quickly and as painlessly as possible. I agree with you there, Mrs. Jones. A quick ending was the only solution. If you could only understand how lonely I was and how lonely Don seemed to be. I, I know I was wrong, Mr. Keene, but that night I, I just couldn't. Telling I was married. May I ask what you propose to do now, Mrs. Jones? I don't know. Naturally, I wouldn't want my husband to know about this. And I certainly don't want to hurt Don. Don's feelings are my chief concern right now. I understand that, Mr. Keene. And, and if there was anything you could do to make it easier for Don and for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. I... I don't mean to be unkind, but I hope you've learned your lesson, Mr. Jones. Why, oh, I, I have. I assure you, I have. I'm ashamed and sorry. Please believe me. Well, I'll do the best I can. Thank you, Mr. King. Thank you so much for understanding. And I only hope, Mrs. Jones, there's nothing more to this case. More? Yes. Oh, I assure you, there isn't. That remains to be seen. Goodbye, Mrs. And that's all she told me, Mike. Hmm. Well, now, uh, did it sound like the truth, Mr. King? It sounded that way, yes. Ah, but she said she was an actress, sir. That's right. And, uh, sure she had no trouble pulling the wool over the lieutenant's eyes. Evidently not. Then maybe this is all just a gag. How do you mean, Mike? Well, I mean, sir, that, uh, well, maybe the husband is in on it. Mm. Frankly, I had the same thought. And sure, who knows what they may be trying to pull on this lad, Mr. King. Sure, the husband's had a brush or two with the law before. But could it be possible that anyone would be low enough to use a soldier, a man who's risked his life for his country and his people, time and time again, as a cat's paw? Well, she didn't seem to have any worries about stringing the lad along in the first place, sir. You may be right, Mike. And if you are, I'll make them both regret it as long as they live. Eh, this case bears watching. There's no doubt about it. I'll say so, sir. Meanwhile, I'm not going to say anything to the lieutenant. Not before I find a way to break the news without upsetting him too much. Call him on the telephone, Mike, and ask him to meet us back in the office in an hour. I'll do that, sir. Perhaps we can work something out for Don. Yes. And get to the bottom of this other business at the same time. In 
just a moment, Mr. Keene will continue with the case of the woman in blue. Meanwhile, if your own dentist or physician has at some time given you an envelope containing anison tablets, you're already familiar with this highly effective pain-relieving agent. For anison relieves the pains of simple headache and minor neuralgia incredibly fast. And here's the reason. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, not just one, but a combination of active and medically proven ingredients. Anison comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30, or bottles of 50 and 100 at any drugstore. Take only as directed. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison. Now back to Mr. Keene and the climax to the case of the woman in blue. Returning to his office with Mike Clancy, his assistant, Mr. Keene finds Lieutenant Lanson awaiting him. Did you find Fran, Mr. Keene? Did you see her? Yes, I saw her, Don. Oh, and she's safe? Perfectly safe. Well, well, then why did she... Don, I don't mean to keep you in suspense, but there's... Well, there's very little I can tell you at the moment. But Mr. Keene, you said... However... That... Yes, sir? There's a nightclub called the Club Palermo. Do you know where it is? Yes, I've been there once or twice. Perhaps if you had dinner there tonight, you might find your friend. I understand that she is seen there often. But don't you think it might be better if I went back to her home? No, Don, and... I definitely do not. Now, take my advice, son. Drop into this place this evening. You may be pleasantly surprised. Will you and Mr. Clancy here come with me, sir? Well, I think uh, Susie would be a better bet to accompany you, Don. Mike and I would hardly make good dancing companions. Oh, I don't think I'd feel much like dancing. I, I just want to see Fran and talk to her once more before I leave. There are certain reasons why I prefer not to go. And you really shouldn't go alone. Oh, very well, sir. But you'll find Susie a very sympathetic and interesting companion, if you care to take her. Oh, I'd be glad to, sir. Good. When she returns to the office, I'll ask her if she's free. Perhaps if you call the office later on, then you could make all the arrangements. All right, thank you, Mr. King. And tomorrow morning, call me back and let me know how you made out with Francia. I will, sir. If you say it's the way it should be done, well, well, that makes it okay with me. Thank you for your confidence, Don. I'll talk to you tomorrow then, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye, Don. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Clancy, and thanks a lot. Oh, not at all, Lieutenant. Will he uh, really meet her there, Mr. Keene? I doubt it, Mike. Francia Jones does go there alone occasionally, but I'm sending him there for a different reason. What, sir? Perhaps he's not quite as much in love with Francia as he thinks he is. A soldier on leave sometimes puts a little too much emphasis on romance, and it's easily understandable. Uh, I know what you mean, boss. Francia seemed to be the first American woman he'd met since coming back from the South Pacific. Now, if he met others and talked to them, danced with them, he might find his attitude changing a bit. Sure, and you may be right, sir. Another thing that startled me was Susie's resemblance to Francia. Susie is much younger, of course, and... Not brittle and superficial like Mrs. Jones, but Susie should be a good substitute to begin with. And she might do him a lot of good. At any rate, we'll see soon enough. place, Donnie. It's so glamorous. Yeah, I, I rather like it myself. Oh, it was very sweet of you to ask me to come. Do you see Francie in the crowd? No, not yet. Or oh, perhaps she hasn't arrived. It's awfully good dance music, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good band. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Would you like to dance, Susan? Oh, I'd love to. There's no point to just sitting here watching the people come in, is there? No. Oh, Susie, I, I'm sorry. That wasn't a very tactful thing to say. Well, that's quite all right. I understand, Don. Well? Huh? Oh, oh the dance. Well, sure, let's go, huh? I love this song. So do I. 
Hey, you're a swell dancer, Susie. So are you. And, well, I guess I should have said this a long time ago. You look very pretty in that glittery blue dress. Oh, it's never too late to say that. Thanks. <laughs> you know, somehow I feel a little more relaxed right now than, well, than I have in days. Oh, it's the atmosphere and the music. No, no, uh-uh. I'd say it was more... More what? More you. Well, what was that step you were doing before? Let's try it again, huh? All right. Oh, do you know how long it's been since I had lobster thermidor? Well, I guess they don't serve a dinner like this out in the South Pacific. Oh, key rations are a banquet out there. You know... We think we know what you soldiers go through, but we really don't here at home. Oh, we're not kicking. We've got a job to do, and we do it, that's all. Where'd you get that ring, Susie? Oh, it's a graduation ring. Oh, I know that, but I mean, what school? Oh, you wouldn't know it. It's a small college out west. Oh. Do you have any folks here in New York? No, I live alone. Oh, that must be tough. Not really. I read a lot and go to concerts. Do you like concerts? Oh, I'm crazy about them. Uh, but let's talk about Francia. I know you'd prefer that. Well, I remember discussing music with her. She wasn't very interested, I guess. Susie, who's your favorite composer? Bach. Why, that's mine, too. Uh, well, strangely enough, I also like Gershwin. Well, so do I. <laughs> uh, well, tell me some more about Fran. She, she must be charming. Well, she's very beautiful. She speaks like... Well, you know, like an actress. With distinction? Mm, yeah, that's it. You know, Susie, you have that quality, too, in a different way. A way I like. Is she a good dancer, too? Very good. And that reminds me, so are you. How about another dance? Love it. Let's go. Wonderful time. Are you? I'll say I am. Boy, this is one of the things we missed so much out on the islands. And boy, oh boy, am I going to make up for lost time. No sign of Francia yet? I don't see her. Look, here's a new step I picked up, Susie. I think you'll like it. I guess the orchestra's taking a rest. Oh, I wish they wouldn't. Just when I was, well, getting used to holding you in my arms, too. Susie, you're... Well, what's the matter, Don? What? Look, there's, there's Fran sitting at that table over there with a the man. Oh, will you go on over and speak to her and I'll... No, no, Susie. No, you're my date for tonight. Besides, uh, well, I'll, I'll just say hello to be polite. Come on. Good evening, Fran. Don... Uh, how are you? Oh, fine, thanks. Oh, this is Miss Hargrave. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, this is my husband, Don. Everett, I want you to meet Lieutenant Lanson and Miss Hargrave. How do you do? How do you do? I'm glad to know you, Mr. Jones. Well, Fran, it was nice seeing you again. Uh, and you? Glad to have met you, Lieutenant. I'm glad to have met you, sir. Bye. Goodbye. Uh, have fun. Married him. She never even... Do you want to leave, Don? Leave? Why, gosh, no, I'm having the time of my life. I, I guess I just never saw her before this way. Fran? Mm-hmm. And, Susie, I don't even care. I'm not kidding now. I'm glad it turned out this way. And I'm glad for you, Don. Susie, you and I are going to have an evening. We'll do the town and just talk and talk until the crack of dawn. How about it? Anything you say, Don. Maybe I'm crazy, but I feel like I'm on wings. Oh, boy, what a break I got, Susie, when I met you. Oh, dear, if I keep making these mistakes. Good morning, Susie. Oh, good morning, Mr. Keene. Oh, Excuse 
me, sir. You look tired. I'm afraid we were out very late last night, Mr. Keene. Mm. Did you have a good time? We had a wonderful time. Uh, we met Francia Jones and her husband. At the nightclub? Yes, Mr. Keene. Well, uh, that was something I didn't really count on. Oh, but it was quite all right. In fact, it didn't mean a thing to Don. He, he was really happy to put an end to it all. Is that so? I know he wasn't in love with Francia. In fact, I'm sure of it now. You are? Why, Susie? Well, well, I... I think he's in love with me, sir. Oh, that's something else I didn't expect. And I'm in love with him, Mr. Keene. Terribly in love. It frightens me a little. Why should it frighten you? Well, I... I just can't make up my mind about him. Could such love be real? A man who changes so quickly... Would he change that way about me, too? I doubt it, Susie. And I'll tell you why. Love isn't something to be reckoned with in regard to time or place. It just happens, that's all. And when it's genuine, you know it. Of such things, romance is made, Susie. Mr. King's office. Susie? Don. How are you, darling? Oh, just fine, dear. I, uh, well, do you want to speak to Mr. King? He's here. Mm -hmm. well, before I do, darling, remember our dinner date tonight. I will. Mr. Keene. Thank you. Hello, Don. Hello, Mr. Keene. I suppose Susie told you about last night. Yes, she did. But you mustn't judge Francia too harshly, Don. Oh, I'm not, sir. At first I thought that, well, that they might be taking advantage of you in some way. That's why I didn't tell you everything at first. But I think it's pretty obvious now that that wasn't the case. Well, sir, that isn't very important to me right now. You've been wonderful. And in return, I, I think I ought to give you fair warning, sir. Warning of what? Well, after the war, when I come back, you're going to lose a darn good office assistant. <laughs> well, when that time comes, perhaps we can effect a compromise. Beneficial to both sides. <laughs> All right, sir, okay with me. And as far as French is concerned, this we must say for her, Don. She made a mistake and corrected it. Which was all the luck in the world for me. Do wartime changes make your dentifrice taste different nowadays? Why not change to Colonos, the toothpaste that really tastes keen? You'll find its delicious minty flavor, its tangy, refreshing taste, chases morning mouth in a hurry. Yes, there's a zip and a tingle to Colonos that leaves your mouth fresh and cool as the sea breeze. And while Colonos makes your mouth feel bright, it helps make your smile look its best. Just wait until you see how spick and span Colonos helps get your teeth. They look their loveliest because Colonos was specifically designed to help give your teeth the highest possible polish Safely. You can get Colonos in any drugstore. K O L Y N O S. Colonos toothpaste. You've been listening to Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, on the air every Thursday at the same time over this network. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday night. When the kindly old tracer turns to the case of the hidden motive. This is Larry Elliott saying good night for the makers of Colonel's Toothpaste and inviting you to listen to Friday on Broadway at the same time over this network tomorrow night. <laughs> Housewives, here's a fast, sure way to keep your home free of stinging, germ-carrying flies and mosquitoes. Use Black Flag Insect Spray. One touch and pests are doomed. Every batch is bug-tested for sure death. For offensive pests like ants and roaches, get Black Flag Powder. Both on sale at leading stores anywhere. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.